After the fall of the most powerful kingdom in the world, the remaining realms united against the end times. Some huddled in cowardice, but a few select, bolstered by their faith, knowledge, strength, and wisdom, strive to resist. These heroes hailed from across the cosmos, from places of cataclysm, or from those yet to face destruction. The Chosen set out to face the unknowable gods of death, the Ruinous Ones. Great scholars and mages have resolved where these gods dwell, each in a realm of their own design, unfit for any creature aside from themselves and their minions. They have wrought annihilation across countless worlds, and they must be stopped at any cost. Bring an end to the Ruinous Ones. Hello. So, last night I finished writing my mini-adventure slash mini-campaign slash setting uh, based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Um, It's pretty much all designed and finished, um, so I wanted to share it with you today, as well as talk about some of the design choices that I made, as well as how it's constructed. Uh, So if you are interested in something like this, the document and everything attached will be in the description of this video uh, for you to use um, and run for your own group if you want to. If you have any questions or concerns about this, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will be happy to answer it. Um, So without further ado, I will show it to you now. All right, so here it is. Um, I've been playing a lot of uh, Dark Souls 3 and that's where much of the inspiration came from. Um, I also saw a really cool image um, that is right here um, from this artist named uh, Tiago Lemon. I don't know how to pronounce the name, um, but I saw this art and I was like, that's really cool art. I want to make a D&D campaign setting for this. And so I did. Um, and I wanted it to be uh, short, uh, not too long, um, and more of like a boss rush feel sort of thing. So small dungeons focused on really cool boss fights um, with some kind of interesting background thrown in there. I also wanted it to be higher level, um, so the rundown is right here. I'll just read this out. Uh, It's meant to be a short campaign lasting about four sessions at about four hours in length each. Uh, The goal is to prevent the destruction of the world by the four riders of the apocalypse. Um, And so yeah, I kind of wanted to go about that. Uh, And I did. So I went with the design choice of using, I believe it's the five room dungeon method. Um, you can look at that um, online, just basically Google that. And essentially it is just having dungeons that are short, um, thematic, and to the point. So they're only five rooms in length, which is really nice for something such as this, where you have four um, major bosses in there already. And it's kind of just meant to be um, focused on that aspect itself. It's not meant to be a big lengthy, epic campaign more so just all right here you go go through the quick dungeon have a cool boss fight done that's kind of what i wanted uh with these themes in mind which you can see here um so as for the characters they are high level 15th level characters um that have seen some stuff already and so i kind of wanted to help my players um be guided in this so i gave them these kind of prompting questions to say what makes them the best what was their most heroic achievement what keeps them grounded, and what is their biggest flaw. Those are kind of the things that I just wanted to help them to guide in their creation. Um, anything is available to play. Uh, as for the the ability scores, this can be up to you if you're going to DM this. You can kind of do whatever you want with this. I thought I wanted to switch it up from the regular, um, and so I gave them 3d6 seven times. Reroll any ones you get one time. So kind of like 46 drop the lowest, but a bit of a change there. Um, and you take the top six of the seven results. I'm going to see how it goes. So far, they've gotten, um, of the four people that have generated their stats, uh, they're about standard array-ish, um, but with a bit of randomness thrown in there too. Uh, the starting funds is based off of the DMG, and I, instead I gave them a plus one weapon and one plus one armor just for free, because a lot of uh, 5e is balanced around having magical weapons at higher levels, and so I wanted to give them that. Um, and these are my inspirations, um, some images that I have 
So this is all included in the um, the document that you would feasibly give to your players to kind of give them a rundown as to how the adventure is going to go. So if you are going to be playing in this, or you are one of my players in this, uh, please do not watch any further because you will be spoiled with things. All right, so here here is my working document of all of the background information. Let me zoom in into 200% so you can actually read stuff. And I will move my face out of the way slightly. Oh, hold on, hold the phone, there we go. Cool, so again, character stuff, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, here's the hub location called Candlelight Hall. So I was very inspired by Dark Souls 3 um, and the other ones in the series um, to kind of have a sort of hub area. And I really liked the vibe of the third one where everything is kind of in one place. So here's the big description. You can read through that if you want. But essentially, um, I just wanted a small hub area. You know what? Why don't I just open up the game itself and I can show you what it looks like. Um, cool. Let me just boot this up. Now I can just show you what it looks like too. So here's the hall. Um, I took some artwork that I found um, and kind of designed it like this. So this is what the, they'll see all of this. They'll see the names of where they can go. Um, the text, all of it is included um, on the screen for them to see. So this is kind of like the hub area where they'll come back to rest, um, get gear, do whatever they gotta do, um, and also learn some background information that I have included in here as well. Um, another thing that's included in this adventure is there is a time limit to completing it. So every day at dawn, uh, you'll basically flip a coin, which in roll 20 you can do by just rolling a 1d2. And you can have it on twos or ones. One of the numbers on the coin will result in the doom countdown increasing. Um, and I was able to make a little table here where if you go to choose side, you can go like this. And the clock will continue to tick as you go. And on the seventh day, um, everything will be destroyed and you'll have run out of time to win. So it kind of, because otherwise you could probably just run through an event, run through a dungeon, have a long rest and relax for like whatever three days, get all the stuff you need. I, there kind of needed to be a reasoning as to why you have to do this so quickly. And that's the countdown is that seven days. So every day you flip a coin, they could um, have like 14 days, depending on the luck that could be done in, in six days, right? So at the end of every long rest, you flip the coin to kind of light the fire underneath them to kind of keep pressing on and keep going. So anyway, that's the hub area. Within it, there are some NPCs, which include the vendor. And I just want it to be simple. They're going to sell regular items. After each boss is defeated, the characters can choose any magic item of increasing rarity. So after they defeat one boss, they get uncommon. Uh, they defeat the next box, they get rare. Very rare. Same thing with the um, blacksmith. You'll get an uncommon weapon or a plus one, whatever you want them to be. And they can decide on that. I felt like that was a good reward instead of experience um, and instead of looting, because I find looting just annoying. Um, the focus on this one isn't looting, it's it's beating these evil creatures. Um, so the binder is the kind of unique sort of cool uh, NPC that I included, kind of based off of the fire keepers from Dark Souls again. Um, and so she kind of has the information on these people, but as a result is kind of limited in what she can access. And so... Um, she'll have like a representation, kind of like a floating um, holographic world to kind of show what's going on. They can see the destruction that's happening and things like that. Because each time that coin flip fails, the world falls more into chaos and destruction. Um, you can kind of do with that which you, with you will. I have a table that I borrowed from another game that has some, a similar mechanic to that countdown that I'm using for my own um, that I can share, but... Um, you should kind of choose what you want for that to be. Um, so each time, I kind of want to include a little bit of role-playing too. So each time a player character wants to hear more knowledge, they must state their true name and a truth about themselves. Um, that piece of information is then captured in exchange for that knowledge. So I kind of wanted to include kind of a give and take sort of thing here. Um, and her knowledge isn't going to be wholly sane. It's going to be kind of vague. And so I made a table. Um, this text should be white. Let me fix that so you can actually see what it says. Cool. So, uh, whoever wants that knowledge will give that information. Each player character can do that once per day as well to kind of limit the amount that they can learn. 
Um, and it is going to be random, so they're going to have to kind of piece this together. But again, the focus of this adventure isn't on this. This is just kind of a side thing that I wanted to include for the fun of it. Um, so yeah, they'll roll 1d6, and then depending on which section they get, they'll roll another d6 and then choose, or they'll, they'll roll a d3. So let's say they rolled a 4. Actually, let's just do it right now. Let's do a roll. Um, roll d6 and a roll of a d3. So I got 2, 3. So then you will read out for them um, 2 and 3. So the bindings were light and warmth against the dark and the cold, forged with the blood of the first sacrifice. So they'll kind of learn these little bits of lore as they go. Um, they'll know the number, obviously, which is kind of good for them to help put pieces together. Um, but yeah, this will kind of provide a little bit of background for what's going on and, and what's behind it. It'll also give them a few tips onto what they are. So like pestilence is toxic and caustic, um, wielding a wicked whip, um, giants are with the, the fire people. So they'll kind of be little hints and be bits and pieces for each of the, uh, riders. Um, yeah, so this is where you can kind of list out each of the calamities. So basically I have it based around... Um, seven bindings that were broken, and each time the calamity happens, they get remade, sort of thing. It's kind of like a cyclical sort of situation. Um, so yeah, but this is more for my own use. You can use this bit if you want, or not, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, each Runus one, a little, there'll be a bit of my ramblings included in here, um, kind of because I was kind of working through this. Uh, but I will remove this now that I'm going to share this. Um, so the dungeon format, again, is that five-room dungeon. Let me put that out. Five room dungeon. And I'll find a link and I'll put it in there too. So it's based around this aspect that there is one room that is the entrance and guardian. Sometimes. There's a puzzle or a role playing challenge. There's a trick or a setback. Then there's a boss fight, a reward, and a revelation or a plot twist. Um, and that's based on... I don't even know who, who came up with this, but someone did. And I really like it, because dungeons are a pain in the butt to make, and when there's only five rooms, it's not so bad. Um, so the thing with my, like, revelation slash plot twist is that each of the final rooms doesn't really have a reward. It has, like, the spirit of that entity in there. And so they can um, kind of remove it, and they can kind of, like, destroy it, or they can, like, accept it and kind of get, like, a buff. So it's kind of like a... a a choice they're going to have to make so they can accept the spirit and kind of get that power or get rid of it but if they accept the power they're going to get corrupted slowly over time kind of like um oh what's that game um shadow of the colossus where he goes and he kills the colossi and he kind of gets um corrupted over time so yeah i kind of wanted to include that in there um entering or leaving so they can leave whenever they want the dungeon, but it's going to get basically reset every time and be a bit harder because I didn't want them to just like go in, come back, go in, come back, you know. Um, also short rests. I was thinking in terms of balancing it too, because the dungeon is so short um, and they have at level 15, they have 15 hit die to play with. Um, so I kind of didn't want to, I wanted to encourage kind of going through as like the boss rushed, encourage the speed is to, um, press on basically is to continue forward so short rest the first time um hit dice are only half as effective so they probably want to use as many as they can they probably will use a lot too um and then the second time they'll get one level of exhaustion which isn't the worst it is disadvantage on ability checks but that can add up especially when other monsters apply exhaustion effects because exhaustion is a thing that's i find is not really used that often as like a debilitating thing but i kind of wanted to include it in here because this is high level so they, i kind of need ways to kind of make them a bit weaker for fights um so now we get into each of the bosses okay random interruption i did want to mention um the actual content of where i got the bosses from so there's two sources that i used um, one of them is this one from Realm Warp Media and Ryan Langer on the DMs Guild. I will get the link and put it in the description right now. Um, the other one was from this Reddit post called The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse um, with some Imgur links uh, to this as well. So I'm using this artwork. I don't know where they got it from, from someone named The Durian. I'm using them. Um, I might use this. Uh, they're CR20. I might kind of blend some of them depending on how I feel. Um, but anyway, this is the source for the actual um, bosses and units themselves is from either this source 
um, from this Reddit post that I will link to, and also this uh, DM Skill product for $1 um, as well. So that's where I actually got the boss content from. Just needed to add this in. I made the video and then forgot to even talk about where I got the actual uh, stat blocks from. So this is where they're from. I also renamed it as Ruinous. Uh, I felt like that was better. I didn't want to completely just take uh, the rider, the white rider, whatever, you know. I liked Ruinous a bit better. Um, so I thought they'd be poison, acid sickness, damage over time. These are kind of just my ideas for it. And this is what I ended up deciding on. Uh, attempt. So I have D&D Beyond links for all the monsters that are included, as well as what are there. Um, the maps are in my Roll20 thing, so I can share them um, as needed. I might link the actual map on this link, probably. Um, I will be adding a general feature, like description, to kind of the area. Um, it's not super important, though. It's not like, it's just kind of flavor. Um, and there's also like sim simple um, combat text for how the monsters should be kind of run. Um, this hyperlink could be fixed, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so there is parasite-themed creatures and like decay sort of monsters focused in on the on the pestilence one things that are gonna apply acid, poison, sickness, things like that. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these because I'll be here all day. Um, but again, the links are gonna be in the description, so check them out as you want. But basically, I'll use this one as like an example for the format. So depending on where they go, they'll fight something at the beginning. There'll be some sort of puzzle or role-playing challenge, as well as a trick or a setback. That just It's not really a combat, it's a non-combat encounter, essentially. Um, then a boss fight with multiple phases that kind of trigger, depending on the boss health. Um, and then, again, that plot twist or revelation. And so these are also based on the seven voices of the seven bindings, which I've uh, attached to... The Seven Deadly Sins, kind of as inspiration, which are kind of secretly hidden here in the text if they listen carefully. Um, and then ask the question, do you bear the burden of their fault or spurn it? So that's their choice to make at that time. Another random aside. Hello. Um, so my thinking behind this is that I wanted the focus of the mini campaign to be focused on the actual Four Horsemen not necessarily on dungeon crawling or any other aspects. So with this, hopefully the goal of each little location is to kind of invoke um, a sense of that, that region. Um, so for example, I'll kind of go through this one really quickly. So for example, again, with the pestilence one, um, I wanted to invoke that feeling of, of the acid and poison and kind of the pestilence and sickness and disease. Um, so that kind of is reminiscent in this area. So they go through room one and then two or three, depending. Um, and the thematic kind of sticking point is kind of brought forth with the combat. So the monsters kind of reflect what is there, um, that sickness and decay sort of thing. And then the additional rooms that are the puzzles, the role-playing challenges. So this one's very straightforward. Um, I kind of, this one reminded me of um, I was inspired by that scene in Harry Potter when uh, Dumbledore is drinking that that potion. Uh, I forget what it's called. I think it is called the Potion of Despair, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so, yeah, the only way to get past is you have to you have to drink the poison. You have to ingest it some way. But of course, they're high level characters, so maybe they can um, nullify it or um, heal the poison or, or heal the damage afterwards. So I'm assuming with higher level players and higher level characters that they're going to be able to deal with these situations. I'm just kind of putting them out there. Like this one, it's very straightforward. Um, it ignores immunities and things like that. It's just they have to drink it this many times. Um, and I have a generator here that can be really, really brutal poisons or really straightforward, just kind of a randomness factor, nothing too intense. Um, and then the trick or setback is kind of like a dark kind of thematic scene um, that can be I have some of them written as kind of role-playing things or like skill challenges things like that kind of depending on what it is um, these two two and three can kind of be uh, switched kind of at, on a whim so this one um, they have to help the sick so they're kind of teleported to this 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 fake hospital where they have to um, help this old healer to to tend to these people um, but every time they attempt healing or whatever, um, it actually deals damage and does the opposite. Um, and they have to, in truth, the kind old man is unwilling, unwillingly causing and causing the reversal of healing magic and must be killed. 
uh, upon killing him or harming a sick person, so they might get like this madness feature. So I kind of wanted things to be kind of slowly wearing them down as they go, because I know they're high level and I don't want them to go into the boss fight um, fully equipped, so they will have to pass these trials before they get to the final boss. Um, maybe they have like a rest between then, like a short rest, heal up a bit, and then they go in there, sort of worn down, maybe they use some spells, things like that going into the final boss. I have no idea if these boss encounters are balanced. Um, I have them fighting those ones that I mentioned before, um, either from the Reddit post or the DMs Guild post, um, along with some sort of ally that is threatening, but not completely detrimental to their health. Um, and then also some sort of terrain feature in the boss fight. So I wanted to include a little bit more details. I was cooking dinner and I thought I should add a bit more. So going to add this in now and provide some more detail before finishing off. So that's all of them. You go through each of them. Um, they cannot get, I have it limited where they can't get to the final boss of death until they do the other three. That's my one railroad that I have included in this adventure is that they can't do all, they can't just jump right to death immediately because it's probably the most difficult um, as well as being kind of like the final one, right? So if they can do it in order, it's totally up to them. Um, so yeah, I have an individual map for each of the uh, bosses and the phases are all labeled and whatnot. Um, I might be able to like copy this Roll20 game for people and then share it, perhaps. Uh, that's a possible if you're really interested and you don't want to do all the work. I could probably do that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just really wanted to share this. Um, and I wanted to give it away for free uh, because it's something I'm proud of and I want people to check it out and use it if they can. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please check it out. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more stuff, but I do want you to be safe, and I want you to have a nice day, and I hope your games go really well. Um, so take it easy, and I will see you soon. Thank you.